Hey everyone, my name is Abhishek and in this video we are going to create this dynamic cloth logo animation in Blender. This is very easy to create and it looks very professional. So let's begin. Alright, so right now I'm in Blender and before I begin, you can see that at this corner you will get all the shortcuts that I'm pressing in case I forget to mention anyone. So let's select everything by pressing A then X to delete. Now we are going to import our logo. So I'm using a SVG file, which is a vector format. So you can create your own in Illustrator or you can import any of them. So let's go to file import and let's select the SVG file. For this example, I'm going to use this Nike logo. Let's click on import SVG. And right away, you can see that we have imported our logo and you can see that it is divided into individual elements and we are going to delete a couple of them which we don't need so first is this one i don't need this so i'm going to delete this part and then we have this small area which we don't need as well so i'm going to press x to delete it so right now you can see everything is in the form of curve so i'm going to select this press a to select everything and i'm going to convert this to mesh so in order to do that press f3 and just search for convert and just click on convert to mesh so now you can see that everything is converted into mesh and after that we are going to join this to create a single object so you can do that by going to object and join or you can press the shortcut ctrl j so now you can see we have this single logo let me just quickly select this and let's press r x and let's rotate it by 90 degree and it's quite small so i'm going to press s and then you can press 8 to scale it eight times just like that it's completely up to you. you can make it however big you want so before we proceed a lot of you watching right now have not subscribed to my channel and i want you to please do that because i want to hit 100k subscriber this year on my channel so make sure to subscribe and press the bell icon so let's continue right now you can see that it's not in the center so we can fix that by pressing the tab key then you can press a to select everything then g to move it and let's place it somewhere in the center something like this now you can press tab again and we are ready to add some depth to this so in order to do that just select your logo and let's go under the modifiers and i'm going to add a solidify and for this example you can pick whatever depth you want i'm going to set this to 0 0.02 and once you're happy with the depth you can select this and let's click on apply so we have our logo let's add our cloth so in order to do that press shift a let's add a plane and we are going to scale this up so press s and I'm going to scale this by 10 times so 10 now we can rotate this by pressing R X 90 degree and let's move it along the Y axis so I want it somewhere around here so I'm going to press G Y and let's move it somewhere around 2 just like that now we are pretty much done with our scene and let's add some cloth to this so now to do that I'm going to select the plane and let's go under the physics properties and i'm going to enable the cloth and now if i play back you can see that our plane will start moving down because we have gravity in our scene luckily we can turn this off in blender but not in real life so let's go under the field weight and i'm going to set the gravity to zero so now if i play back you can see that nothing is happening because we don't have any gravity and let's select our logo i want the logo to collide with this cloth so in order to do that we are going to add a collision to this so let's select the logo and just enable the collision just like that now we can animate our logo so let's go to the very beginning and let's press i to add a location keyframe let's go to somewhere around 20 frames and let's press g y and i'm going to move it three units so you can see that our logo is behind our cloth so this will hit the cloth and after that the cloth will act accordingly now let's press i let's add location keyframe so now if i play back you can see that our logo is moving and it is hitting the cloth but you will notice that the cloth is not acting like how it should but instead it is acting just like a normal plane and reason for that is we don't have any subdivision so it is basically a single plane just like this so you can select the plane and press tab then right click let's subdivide this so let's open this up and i'm going to set this to 10 and then we can press again right click subdivide so now you can see that we have a bunch of different small areas so i think we are pretty much done with this so we can press tab to get out of it let's go back and now if i play back you can see that we are able to get some sort of cloth looking properties 
but we have to tweak this further. So let's select the cloth and first I'm going to change the properties. So let's open this properties tab and I'm going to set this to silk. So now you can see that properties have changed and we are going to tweak a couple of these settings. So first I don't want any tension neither in blender nor in life. So let's set this to zero compression. I'm going to set this to zero and shear. Let's set this to two or 2.5, whatever you want. Damping and the rest of the things will remain same. Let's go under the collision. From here, we are going to increase the quality. So I'm going to set this to 20 or max, whatever you want. In case you're, you have a slower PC, then you can just lower this down. And let's enable the self collision. Now, if I play back, you can see that we are getting something, but it is not looking that good. So we can fix that by selecting the cloth and let's go under the modifier and let's add a subdivision surface modifier. And now we can increase the quality to something like three for both the viewport and render. And let's play it. Now you can see that we are getting much better cloth simulation. Again, if your system is slow, then you can just lower this value to whatever you want. Let's set this to two for now. And in case you are able to see some squarey kind of things, then you can just select this right click and just click on shade smooth. Now we have our cloth, but we want the cloth to wrap around our logo. So in order to do that, we can add a force field. So press shift A. Let's go to force field and let's add a force. Now we can select the properties from physics tab and we can just move it to somewhere around here. So we can press G Y and let's move it something like negative five to over here. And now you can play around with the strength and I'm going to set this to something like negative 20 or 10. Maybe let's set this to negative 20 and see what we have created. So now if I play back, you can see that our logo hits the cloth. And after that, our force field attracts the cloth towards itself. But the strength is way too harsh. So we can select this and I'm going to set this to negative 10 maybe. So now if I play back, you can see that we are able to get some sort of cloth looking properties, but let's play around with it. And instead of having this all the time, so we are going to select a position somewhere around 14 or 15 seconds. And I'm going to select this and I'm going to set the strength to zero. We don't want any of the strength right now. Let's move to somewhere around 20 or 25. And let's set this to something like negative 10. Again, right click insert keyframe and let's go to somewhere around 40 and I'm going to set this to zero right click insert keyframe. So now you can see that our cloth will move something like this. Now you can see that it is wrapping our text. If you want to make this not that harsh, then you can just play around with the strength and you can just lower this down. So let's set this to something like negative five insert a keyframe and now if i play back here you can see that now we don't have that much of force and it is looking fine let's add a camera quickly so press shift a and we are going to add a camera let's press numpad zero to get inside the camera now you can press n on the keyboard and let's set the rotation to 90 y to zero and z to zero as well now we can move this further by moving along the y axis. So let's place it somewhere around here. Now we can play it and let's see what we have created. So I think this is looking fine, but we need to have a little bit more area. So I'm going to select the cloth and let's increase its size. Something like this. After that, press control A. Let's apply all transformations and let's go to the very beginning and let's play this out. So now you can see we have created this very amazing animation. Now it's completely up to you. You can play around with these parameters and you can just play around with the force field to see what looks good for you. But for me, I think this is looking fine. And once you're happy with this, we are ready to add some texture. So let me just quickly do that. So let's pick a point somewhere around here. Let's go under the settings. And first we are going to change the rendering engine from EV to cycles. And then let's change the setting of device to GPU compute. And after that, we are ready to add some texture to this. So first let's open this up and let's go to the rendered view just like that. And right now you can see that nothing is visible because we don't have any light in our scene. So let's press zero to get out of the camera. And now we are going to add some lights. So let's change this to shader editor. 
and first i'm going to change this to world and right now you can see we have this background and we are going to add an hdri so you can just simply press shift a and search for environment texture let's add it over here click on open now i'm using these hdri so i will put a link in the description from where you can download this from polyhaven website so let's select this one and click on open image and now i'm going to plug the color to this color and now you can see we have this hdri in our scene just like that so let's press zero to go it inside the camera and if you want you can play around with the rotation of this environment by simply selecting this and if you have node wrangler installed then you can press ctrl t to get all of these mapping and texture coordinate otherwise you can just press shift a and just search for texture coordinates and just import these manually and after that just plug the generator into vector and the vector into vector now you can rotate these by simply using this and you can see that it will also affect the scene lighting just like that and you can play around with the strength you can make this lower or brighter however you want using this once you're happy with this we are ready to add some colors to our scene so let's go back to the object mode and first i'm going to select my cloth and let's click on new now let's change the base color and i'm going to make this little bit pink something like this let's go under the properties and first i'm going to increase the roughness a little bit now if you want you can have clear coat and it will add some glossy areas like these but if you don't want then you can just simply set this to zero but i think this is looking fine now i'm going to select the logo and over here we have a bunch of different materials so i'm going to select this one and let's click on the duplicate so that we have this new copy of material and i'm going to make this darker and you can just play around with its color you can give it a different color something like this it's completely up to you but for this example i'm going to set this to a darker color just like this and let's go back to the very beginning and now you can just play around with these settings but before that let's bake our cloth so let's go back to the solid view and i'm going to select the cloth and after that go under the cloth settings under the physics and let's go down you can see we have this option called cache and we are going to just render this and we are going to bake this simulation so i'm going to just bake the 90 seconds so i'm going to set this to 90 so we will have somewhere around here so after that just click on bake and it will bake all the physics of the cloth so that you don't have to render it during the rendering process so now if i play back you can see we have this sort of animation and we are pretty much done with this now our last step is to just render this out let me just quickly go back to the mode and you can see we have the cloth and this will look much better in the cycles just like that and our last step is to render this out so let's tweak a couple of the settings to make this work good so let's go under the settings and i'm going to first change the number of samples so you can see that it's 4096 so i'm going to just lower this down to something like 64 because we don't need these much of samples and just make sure that denoising is enabled after that let's go under the light paths and we don't have any volume we don't have any transparency transmission we are going to set this to zero for both and let's go under the performance and rest of things are pretty much same and once you're happy with this we can go under the render settings and from here you can play around with the resolution 1920 by 1080 and we are going to render out only the 90 seconds because we only have baked the 90 first 90 frames and after that you can just pick whatever format you want rgb 16 bit let's set this to zero and you can just pick wherever you want to save your files and once you're done with this you can just go out and just click on render animation now rendering might be very time consuming but there is a very nice way you can just set the resolution to something like 1280 by 720 which will make this low resolution but after that you can just upscale this to 4k without losing any quality using a very nice method which i have explained in this video so i will put a link in the description you can check out this video and you can render out this in a low resolution something like this and after that you can upscale this to something like 4k without losing any quality so just make sure to check out that tutorial as well 
So in this way, you can create these kind of animations and the project files for this tutorial is available on Patreon. So if you are supporting me over there, then you can download it from there. And if you are not, then you might consider it because you will get access to the tutorial project files and exclusive templates that are available only on Patreon. So with that being said, my name is Abhishek and I'll see you in the next one.